Coming up, we'll take you to Whitley County, where a home is in danger of being flattened by a landslide. Cold weather settling back into the bluegrass state. I'm tracking the potential for a little patchy overnight frost just ahead. And cleanup continues from tornadoes and severe storms that hit Kentucky this weekend. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. The week is off to a calm and cool start. Our run of cooler than normal temperatures continues. This is a live look at downtown Lexington where it's in the low 60s right now. And it could be another very cold morning tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. Chris? A lot of areas this morning. Jennifer started out with low and mid 30s, flirting with the freezing mark and a little kiss of frost. I think we're going to do it all over again as we go into tomorrow morning. Right now in Lexington, started out the day with a lot of sunshine, but with some cold air aloft, starting to see a little cloud cover. Billowing up, and that's keeping temperatures in check into the low 60s. 61 degrees right now. Lexington humidity is at 39 percent. Winds, well, not talking about a whole lot in terms of a gusty wind out there. A lot of upper 50s and low 60s out there this afternoon. 59 current temperature into Richmond. That's a cool spot in the central Kentucky. Lexington, Mount Sterling, Danville all checking in at 61 degrees. 61 into Somerset as well. Frankfurt at 63. Let's take you through the evening into the overnight and watch the temperatures take another turn. Tumble out there tomorrow morning. Green thumbs protect the tender plants and the vegetation yet again. Really surprised we don't have a frost advisory out, but hey, we got to do what we got to do nonetheless. Low and mid 30s in a lot of those colder valleys into the first part of tomorrow. Freeze warnings are out and frost advisors, I should say, for parts of surrounding states into Ohio and believe it or not, to our south and southeast into sections of Tennessee. A little patchy frost tonight. A few showers ahead of us for the middle of the week. And Jennifer, it's all eyes on the Derby weekend. I'm going to warm it up into the seven-day forecast a little later on. We'll see you in 15 minutes, Chris. A southeastern Kentucky mother says she's fortunate her children were not hurt when a tree fell on their home. She says her children were sleeping when a tree knocked out power lines, a utility pole, and part of their trailer in Whitley County. As WKYT's Mike Linden shows us, more rain could spell destruction for their home. It's our top story at 4. According to Whitley County Emergency Management officials, early last week they were notified of a tree behind this home here on Freeman Hollow Road that if it continues to rain, the tree will give way and possibly flatten the home. The homeowners say they heard snapping behind their home early last week during heavy rainfall. A landslide pulled a large tree down several hundred feet along with thick mud and other debris right into their backyard. EMA officials say the homeowners have since been evacuated. EMA Director Danny Moses says landslide damage at any time this season can range anywhere from thirty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Once it breaks loose, we'll have mud and rock coming in, and the way this house is situated, there's not uh, nowhere else for it to go but through the house. While the homeowners did not want to appear on camera, they say that they've lived here for thirty-five years. And this is the first time anything like this has happened. In Whitley County, Mike Linden, WKYT. Moses says an illegal strip mine behind where the slide began could also have led to the ground giving way. Cleanup continues from Saturday's severe storms and tornadoes. The National Weather Service says an EF2 tornado touched down in Edmondson County and an EF1 hit Adair County. The emergency management director there says the Montpelier community was hardest hit with barns and a silo damaged. No injuries were reported. That same storm system damaged homes in Henderson County. The National Weather Service says it was not a tornado, but a microburst of wind that lasted for about 25 minutes and had peak winds of about 100 miles an hour. It was strong enough to flip a woman's trailer. We're working on other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with a look at some news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. Investigators have identified two people found dead in a burning building. The Mercer County coroner says Douglas Carter and Carol Anderson were found dead inside the old Chubby's Auto Sales building Saturday. Firefighters also found a meth lab inside, but they don't think that's what caused the fire. The victim's cause of death is still under investigation. We'll have the latest on that investigation from Mercer 
Windsor County on WKYT News at 4.30. Friends are remembering a 17-year-old who was killed in a crash. Taylor Woods died in Casey County where state police say a car crossed the center line and hit his motorcycle. Woods served as a volunteer junior firefighter in Lincoln County the last two years. We'll have details on how he's being remembered coming up on WKYT News at 5. And we are tracking the search for a prison escapee. Officials say Charles Blanton walked away from the Blackburn Correctional Complex in Lexington last night. He's the fourth prisoner to escape this month. People who live nearby say they're frustrated that it continues to happen. Get more security. I think if, if need be, they need to get more guards. Blanton was serving a 16 year sentence on charges out of Laurel County, including manufacturing meth. We'll have the latest on the search ahead on WKYT News at 6. That is a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Now to stories making headlines around the world at four. The death toll is now more than 4,000 people from the earthquake that struck Nepal Saturday. The State Department says at least four Americans died at the Mount Everest base camp. It's the worst earthquake to hit Nepal in more than 80 years. Steve Nance has the latest on the frantic search for survivors. In Nepal, it's a race against the clock. Against long odds, officials are scrambling to find any survivors from Saturday's devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake. On Monday, a young child was rescued, pulled from a large pile of rubble. But for many others, they stood little chance. The death toll continues to rise well into the thousands. Thousands more were injured. At least four U.S. citizens were killed, including Dan Fredenberg, a Google executive who was climbing Mount Everest when an avalanche swept through. We threw him a really big party before he left, um, but you just, especially with Dan, you just don't assume, you just assume he'd be able to get out of it. He'd be able to figure this out. Saturday's quake turned buildings, homes, and temples into unrecognizable mounds of concrete. There are makeshift camps for survivors, and over 15 nations plus the EU are sending aid. But there are reports that hospitals are simply overwhelmed. In villages outside the capital, closer to the epicenter, there are fears of total destruction. Uh, as a president, I'd like to thank all the international community and to my people. We all are helping each other, and we are ready to uh, tackle. Uh, this calamity. The financial cost from the quake could be staggering, an estimated $5 billion, according to one economist. But for now, the priority remains finding anyone who could still be alive, waiting, praying for a miracle. I'm Steve Nannis reporting. Today, Secretary of State John Kerry announced the U.S. will send an additional $9 million worth of aid to Nepal. That brings the total to $10 million. A final farewell in Baltimore, Maryland today to a man who died while in police custody. Freddie Gray died earlier this month after suffering a mysterious spinal injury. An estimated 2,500 people filled a church for the nearly two-hour funeral. Gray's death sparked more than a week of marches and rallies. In Colorado, it's day one of the trial of suspected Aurora movie theater shooter James Holmes. The 27-year-old is accused of opening fire at a movie theater in 2012, killing 12 people and wounding 70. Prosecutors are expected to argue Holmes planned the attack for weeks. Holmes has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Loretta Lynch is the nation's new attorney general and the first African-American woman to hold the post. She was sworn in this morning by Vice President Joe Biden. After five months of delays, the U.S. Senate finally confirmed Lynch last week by a 56 to 43 vote. Republicans had refused to bring up her nomination for a vote until Democrats cut a deal on abortion language in an unrelated sex trafficking bill. Lynch replaces Eric Holder, who stepped down after six years on the job. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Stocks end the day lower coming off Friday's record levels. The Dow fell 42 points to close at 18,038. The Nasdaq dropped 32 and the S&P 9. A new startup email service promises to keep all of your messages private. It encrypts emails so only the sender can decide who sees them. Danielle, Notting Danielle Nottingham shows us how one company promises a new level of online privacy. Email privacy used to be a big concern for Caltech professor Maria Spiripulu. 
whenever I was writing email, I was thinking that uh, uh, I was basically putting it as a headline in a newspaper. But for two years, she's been testing an encrypted email service one of her students designed called Proton Mail. It promises to keep third parties and the government from snooping through your inbox. The recipient must enter a password to decode and read the message. Proton Mail co founder Jason Stockman says the Edward Snowden NSA leaks inspired the idea. Existing services, you kind of trust them to keep your data secure and private, but they hold the lock and key. With Proton Mail, you hold the lock and key. The company is based in Switzerland where strict privacy laws protect user data. Because the emails are encrypted from sender to recipient, not even Proton Mail can read what's stored on its server. Even if we're compelled to hand over user data, all we can give people is completely encrypted information that only the original recipient could read. There are other secure features like self-destructing email. Similar to Snapchat, it lets users like Spiripulu set a time for the message to expire. Do you feel like your email is truly secure with this system? Yes, I feel that the email is absolutely truly secure, as secure as can be with the technology we have today. Spiripulu is one of about 400,000 users around the world testing Proton Mail. It could be available to everyone this fall. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Pasadena, California. The company plans to make its revenue from paid subscriptions for premium email features. Email users can sign up on the company's website for an invitation to test the service. There's this is a big week in the Bluegrass State with the Kentucky Derby coming up Saturday. That's right. Our Deanne Stevens out and about at Phasic Tipton with more on Talk Derby to me. Hey, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys, from Phasic Tipton, where they are preparing for talk derby to me. Now, this is where the best of the best are going to be here in just a little bit at Phasing Tipton, and they're going to help you pick your derby horse. Uh, Greg David is with us, and this is what I loved. You said, Deanne, I should have listened to him last year. Oh, they, they picked all three of the winners last year, win, place, and show, and of course, I wasn't smart enough to uh, follow <laughs> that lead. Talk Derby to me is a fun event, all benefiting the McKenna Foundation. For folks who may not be familiar with that, you are the father of McKenna, uh, who has since passed, but her memory lives on and on at the UK Children's Hospital. You guys do wonderful things for the hospital. Talk a bit about that. Well, we've had a lot of people that have been involved with McKenna Foundation. Uh, it was founded in 2001, and we've had several events over the years for the last 14 years. And uh, all of our proceeds go to Kentucky Children's Hospital, and we're project oriented. So everything that we do, basically, you can see at the hospital. Uh, our signature uh, hospital event and project is the McKenna Pediatric Emergency Center. Mm -hmm. So just a wonderful thing. And again, the nurses and the staff and the doctors at the hospital are absolutely phenomenal. And my wife and I have dedicated our lives to making that. You know, work. Absolutely, you do a wonderful job, and uh, the the money from tonight will again go towards a project at the UK Children's Hospital. Tickets are still available. You can either go online and get those, or folks can show up here at the door. That's correct. Uh, it's going to be an exciting night. We have a great time. Uh, we have uh, three different people from the horse industry that are going to help us with tonight's event, and they're basically in the handicapping business. And maybe Christina can tell you a little yeah. bit about them. <laughs> Christina, here's what you should tell us first: is maybe we should listen to them know, because if I'm... they're as good as last year, right? Absolutely. There's, can't, how, could you ever believe that they would pick all the horses? So we're excited. They're back again to tell us exactly what they think and who they're going to win. And I'm definitely betting on them. There's no doubt about that. And you know, come out, have a Drink with us, you know, learn a little bit more. So. Who's who's going to be here tonight? Uh, we're going to have Claire Novak with Blood Horse, Ed DeRosa with Brisnet, and Chris McCarron, Hall of Fame jockey. Come on, he knows everything, right? So <laughs> come on out. Come on out and talk Derby to me here at Facing Tipton. Doors open at six, dinner at seven, and then the program begins at seven forty-five. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. Nice to see the sunshine and the it dry is, up there. Yeah, and everybody right, right, right now mm -hmm. wanting to know about that derby forecast and what you see today with the sun. Probably what you're going to get derby day, too. Maybe a little warmer. Mm, I think so. All right, that's a win. It's time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Five and six year old children who watch just an hour of TV a day are significantly more likely to be overweight or obese compared to those who watch less. This is according to a new study by the National Center for Education Statistics. It finds U.S. kindergartners watch an average of three hours of television a day.
Electronic cigarette use among teenagers is rising rapidly, according to a new study by the American Academy of Pediatrics. It finds 11% of teenagers smoke e-cigarettes, up from 8% in 2012. A new national survey reveals 11% of women know the female symptoms and risks of stroke. For example, women who have migraines have a higher risk of stroke, and during a stroke, women often have hiccups. Stroke kills twice as many women a year as breast cancer. Chipotle says it's now removed all genetically engineered ingredients, or GMOs, from its menu. It's the first major restaurant chain to do so. This comes as customers look for more natural ingredients in their food. Chipotle's founder says just because food is served fast doesn't mean it has to be made with cheaper, highly processed ingredients. Abercrombie's shirtless models will be putting their clothes back on. In a new set of policies, Abercrombie and Fitch announced it will stop using sexualized photos in its marketing and will no longer hire sales staff based on their looks and body type. The teen retailer hopes the change will attract more shoppers after years of lagging sales. The official title for sales associates will now be brand representatives, replacing the old title model.